good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this session focusing on the role of cities as innovation hubs. Uh, my name is Pia Lavrila. I'm from DG Research and Innovation from Unit Regional Dimension of Innovation, and uh, I'm here to moderate this session. We are delighted to have with us today a panel of high-level speakers, whom I will now briefly introduce to you. On my left, we have here Mr. Jan Olkrift, member of the European Parliament from Poland and rapporteur to the European Regional Development Fund. And he is also founder and chair of the parliamentary uh, urban intergroup that uh, discusses urban related matters. Then we have here Christian Swanfeld, senior policy analyst from DG Regional Policy from Unit Urban Development Territorial Cohesion. Christian has worked as analyst for almost two decades at um, national and European administrations um, in the field of innovation, research and regional policy. We have here also on the far left Mr. Paul Bevan, Secretary General of Eurocities. And Paul has over 25 years of experience of UK local and regional government and a wealth of expertise in economic development, regeneration, and public service management. I will then move to my far right side. We have here with us uh, Wim Hafkamp. He is a professor at Erasmus University and director of uh, European Metropolitan Network Institute in the Netherlands. And Wim is environmental economist, also with over 25 years of experience of research policy and practice. And he is currently a chair of the management board of the research joint programming initiative Urban Europe, of which we will learn more later this session. And then next to Wim, we have here Miroslav Miller. He is a president of Wroclaw Research Center, EIT+. Uh, which is a company established by Wroclaw University, city of Wroclaw, and Lower Silesia region. He is also a professor at Wroclaw University of Technology and an initiator and coordinator of uh, Lower Silesian Center for Advanced Technologies. And then last but not, not least, on my right side here, we have uh, Ivan Tosix. Ivan is a managing director of Metropolitan Research Institute, Budapest, and he is also a rapporteur for our session today. And um, as a background, Ivan is a mathematician and a sociologist with long experience of urban sociology, strategic development, housing policy, and especially EU regional policy issues. Then a few words about the focus, focus of our, our session today. As we all know, urban areas, they are places of both challenges and opportunities. Some of the major problems in our society are concentrated in cities. Traffic congestion, pollution, security and social cohesion problems, the energy challenge, the need to adapt to climate change, the list could be continued. We, we all know there's challenges ahead and, and this is a reality where Europe cities have to have to find a way forward. But at the same time, Europe cities have a high innovation value and potential. They are sources of innovation, and they have capacities to develop themselves into innovation hubs where knowledge, uh, policy, and practice come together to create innovative ideas and solutions. So it is about this dimension that we are here this afternoon to share experiences how to make this development happen. How should cities develop their innovation potential and successfully contribute to smart regional specialization processes of which we learned in the previous session? What is the role of different urban networks and platforms to achieve this goal? And what about the outlook for the future and beyond Europe, as it was discussed this morning already, we are part of global networks, cities are part of global uh, networks and confronted with global challenges. I am sure that uh, we all agree that achieving sustainable urban development 
it would contribute significantly also to achieving Europe 2020 and uh, innovation flagship aims. As you may know, and I think one of the speakers in the plenary session, in the opening session mentioned, that um, Innovation Union explicitly puts forward a proposal that is currently in reflection to establish a European innovation partnership in the area of smart and livable cities, with a view to tackle the challenges and bring together all the relevant actors from all levels to boost innovation and to better coordinate existing and future initiatives. Horizon 2020 is also expected to continue its support for research and innovation that is relevant for cities, Urban development, as well as research and innovation, feature very high in the Commission proposals for future cohesion policy. And I think we all share the same, same uh, feeling that the time is now very um, ripe to share experiences on the best way forward. Before I invite uh, our, our speakers to, to give their views, I will give the floor to our rapporteur, Ivan for a brief message. Okay, uh, hello everybody. I am a strange animal here because I am not coming from the innovation sector, I'm coming from cohesion policy. Secondly, I'm coming from a new member state, Hungary. And thirdly, I am a sociologist. So I am a bit, uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, I, it was very interesting to listen all the things uh, today uh, in the presentations, but I'm a bit suspicious. There are threatening facts in Europe. As it was told today, 90% of innovation goes to the old member states. And there is a growing intra-European migration from east to the west. If you look at this map, which is an uh, a, uh, official map of ESPON, you can see that by 2050, some peripheral regions of Europe will lose 50% of their population. There will be deserts on the periphery of Europe. All the people go to the uh, most developing uh, Western regions of Europe. Uh, there is a big polarization even within the new member states. I am participating in an ESPON project which shows that in the new member states, the capital cities are growing much faster than the secondary cities. This is not the case in Western Europe anymore, but in Eastern Europe, the innovation is really enlarging differences. And there are big externalities in urban development as a result of this concentrated development. Look at this picture. This is metro number 13 in Paris. At each entrance of the metro, two people are standing uh, uh, and pushing the people in, like the Japanese metro. Similar pictures can be seen in London in the, in the uh, early morning hours. And if you look at the map of Madrid, there are three motorway rings already around the cities, and the next one is under construction. Is it really this concentration what we need? What kind of Europe we want? This is a big question for me. In the USA, of course, they have a higher R&D spending. They have a more mobile society. Uh, they value less urban history and urban heritage. They have large forgotten brownfields, uh, rust belts. Detroit has lost half of the population. No one really cares about that. Millions of people are homeless. Do this what we want in, uh, this, is this what we want in Europe? Uh, I think Europe has to be different. The European city has a, has a value, and the Cities of Tomorrow project has shown this uh, of the European Commission. I have to remember everyone that EU 2020 has five headline targets, and only one of them is the R&D uh, exp uh, expenditure. The other ones are environmental, and they are uh, important aims uh, regarding education and, and poverty. Now, the problem is that these targets are in conflicts with each other. If we spend more on one, then less remains on the others, and especially the situation will be more difficult. If we have a very compact urban development, this is a picture about The Hague, it becomes more and more compact with increasing problems within the city. If we spend a lot of money on, on uh, uh, big environmental investments, how much money will remain on this picture. This is also Europe. This is another part of Europe which would need uh, a kind of interventions. So my doubts are how we can really connect uh, excellence and equalization. And I would raise three questions. Is the 
these buzzwords that we have heard today, smart specialization, stairway of excellence, networking, is it only a lip service to cover the wish of net payer countries to get higher share of the cake? Or can these uh, really contribute to the development of all parts of Europe? I would like to get some evidence that this kind of development can uh, 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 lead to a better, uh, to a more equal Europe. How can spatially blind innovation efforts really be combined with cohesion efforts? I think the cities and the urban, functional urban areas are in key position where the two things could be brought together. And finally, regional innovation strategies. How this comes together with integrated territorial investments, the bigger share given to, to the cities, not to the regions. These are some questions, and I hope you will get some answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ivan, for these um, excellent questions for our session today. I would like to immediately move to the, to the intervention by Jan Olbrecht, and the floor is yours. Yes. <coughs> Thank you very much. And I, there are, in the... Uh, in the political world, there are some fashions uh, which are going round, and uh, uh, one of the fashion and habits is first, uh, uh, w whenever you go and you have the presentation PowerPoint from any city, I know it because I used to be the mayor. Uh, in each city in the world, you can st you have the presentation which starts with the uh, circles and the the distance from this city to the other cities, and this is the center of the world. And uh, in each city is the same. In each city is the, uh, in, in a way, it's a center. In a way, in a way. So th this is the, some kind of habit now. I mean, speaking about it. We have new, new habit. I mean, now uh, uh, cities are very fashionable. I mean, uh, each speech starts with that how many percent people live in cities. How many people live, live in cities in 20 years, 30 years, etc. It's, it's like the, the new mantra. Uh, and uh, and we, we start to, to think very quickly about smart cities, etc. Uh, we, should, we should go into details, because if not, we will have some problems to, to, to identify the, the, the subject. Let me, uh, uh, let me uh, give some uh, proposal to, to, to put in order. First, when we discuss the problem of um, urban issues, uh, and smart cities, smart specialization, etc. Are we speaking about the uh, European policy and European money? And this is immediately 1320. Uh, and we are very quickly in a situation of programs and, uh, and of course, who can get the money from the programs, how can we distribute it, etc. Or are we talking about the process and the process which is, which is ongoing? and which can be organized, uh, which can be supported by the credits, European money. Or whatever. First of all, there is an idea, and someone knows uh, uh, maybe the vision, like some uh, speaker said, uh, of, the, of, of someone. But anyway, I, th I think that we have a tendency to, to drop immediately in the problem of, of European money. But you know, the money can, be, can support the process and can facilitate the process. But uh, uh, either we discuss the, uh, uh, how to organize the, uh, the distribution of money and the policy making with money, and this is my problem as the rapporteur of ERDF, and I will be back to it, or we are discussing of, about the process which are going uh, in the cities. Second element, when we say cities or regions, are we discussing about local authorities, or are we discussing about the problem of the human settings and uh, the whole population? Something which is, which is happening in, in this very, very important uh, territory, functional area, etc., where the responsibility is the, uh, with the uh, uh, city authorities. But uh, when we say innovative regions, do we speak about the innovative uh, uh, regional authorities, or do you are discussing about the different actors which are in the, in the region and what they cooperate, they create the network, etc.? I, I don't know which, which is better, but we should be very clear. We should be very clear, are we discussing about the actors or we are discussing about the processes in which the actors are, are, are very important? If not, we, will be, we can be very quickly in a trap uh, 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 about the, 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 whole, the whole process. When we discuss the smart cities, 
please look at the European documents. It's very fascinating. When you, when you, uh, uh, recently, I participated in the debate with Chinese. The uh, European Commission has just signed the agreement with the Chinese about urbanization. Just two days ago, I had a meeting with the people from EuroChina projects, right? And uh, the question is, who in the Commission is responsible for it? When the, we have the Cities of Tomorrow analysis, which are organized by DG Regio. Urbanization is organized by DG Energy. And the, of course, this is, this is not by chance. Because when you look at the smart cities, smart cities is not about the innovation in cities in European documents. Smart cities in European documents is about the energy. Of course, and non directly about the transport buildings, energy networks, but step by step about the, uh, the organizing the intelligent transport, etc., etc. But in fact, everything is organized uh, on the base of energy and a set program, right? So, so uh, that's why we should be very careful with the words because you know when you speak about smart cities, European smart cities program, but do we discuss uh, 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 the program, for example, of IBM, who is about the uh, innovative instruments in the cities? We have just with Lambert and Lister, we organized a meeting in the Parliament with different uh, big companies that specialize in innovation. I mean, IBM, Microsoft, Siemens, Nokia, Siemens, Nokia. Uh, we organized a meeting with them in the parliament, asking them, what about cities? What is, what is your, your, your uh, Philips was also, uh, what is your urban policy? Are you discussing about lightning? Are you discussing about the uh, traffic organization? Are we discussing the innovative way of organizing the city? So I think that we are facing very complicated situation now because we, are, we, are, uh, uh, we can put ourselves in a, in a trap, uh, being in, uh, uh, close with the words. It's like the smart specialization, smart specialization of the cities and of the regions. Uh, uh, during one of the hearings the, uh, during last month, uh, 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 one of the experts said, and I agree, the smart specialization will be limited in the future perspective. Now we go to European money. Why will it be limited relative to today's situation? I mean, even to, took part in this in the hearing as well. Why? Because we will have everything will be ring fenced. Everything will be ring fenced, which is the, the, the ring fencing of everything is the result of the crisis, which just said by Valambar during the. So, this is the, the demand for the more control. If we have the more control, we, we, we want everything to be concentrated. So, if we, we will have the thematic concentration, so with the very strict rules, so in fact, we will ring fence everything, we will make thematic concentration, and they will say, you can you choose your smart specialization if you want, but you cannot go here and there, you can just, you can get money for this. I'm going to, to the beginning of my speech. If we want the region, regional authorities, cities authorities, to think about their specialization, we should, we should tell them that as far as concerns European money, it can be only support for their process which has been planned. Because if we start uh, uh, the other way around, so we start with the European programs, uh, uh, and we said, you can now create the smart specialization. One of the business person today uh, during the plenary said, when will you be ready? Will you be ready after th uh, 13? It's late. But you no, know, everybody is waiting for th uh, 14, 20, because we will have new money. So I don't think that this should, we, should, we should base the, the debate about sp smart cities, smart specialization, to, to base it on European money. It should be about the thinking, about the ideas, about the networking, I mean, creating the links with the business. Uh, I, I think in, in the joint programming uh, initiative, I think one, of the, one of the remarks I found was the, the, problem, of the, the problem between R&B uh, uh, research and development and, uh, and ICT, for example, and the, 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 uh, which is not, not very easy. So I think that we should, during the conf this conference, we should be concentrated on the process which is, should start now. I mean, networking, clustering, etc. And the question is how can we use European money in the next programming to support it? And what can be supported from Euro European money to the processes which are important now? Because we, we are 2012, we have 12, 13, and the, 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 everything is going on. I mean, the life is not waiting. Business is not waiting for European money for 2014. So we cannot create the, 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 the life in Europe is based on the programming periods. 
Why? Because I, as a rapporteur, and this is my, my, my last remark, as a rapporteur of the RDF, I had the problem with the DG Regio of my neighbor, right? Because we have ten thematic concentration. And uh, in the thematic concentration, we have priorities. We have innovation as a priority. ICT is not priority. So, okay, so if ICT is not priority and innovation is priority, so the, the question is why ICT is not priority during this period? As a rapporteur, I will propose to enlarge the thematic concentration and put the fourth thematic uh, uh, inside to make innovation and ICT together with energy efficiency and SMEs, right? So, but, you know, how to explain, how to explain to the final beneficiaries that, that in our long-term policy, when everything should be based uh, on the networking, putting together universities, business, uh, uh, research centers, etc., and why this we, we can create as priority and this not. So th th that's why I think we should uh, first uh, uh, think about how to create the, uh, the, 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 the processes, how to create, the, how to uh, take seriously territorial problem of research, and of course the problem of excellence, because now we have disproportion and it will, it, it will be continued. In, in future. We are discussing about stairways to excellence. I mean, now my, my congratulations for someone who can answer the question what, is, what it is. I'm in the European Parliament. I was really interested. What, what is behind? Uh, behind, uh, except of the situation, uh, even told it not in a very uh, political way, I will take political way. How to make the people be quiet because you can get also the money even if you don't have the excellence. Let's call it stairways to excellence. To which excellence and which stairways? I mean, where, where are they, when they start the stair, stairs and when, when they go? I mean, to, w uh, this is a political question because if not, there will be problem. We have no link in the ERDF up to now to Horizon 2020. I put myself as rapporteur the link between ERDF and Horizon 2020 to put the European money to reinforce Horizon 2020. If not, we will have different DGs, different commissioners, different money, but beautiful ideology. Just to summarize, I think that uh, 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 we are in a situation that we, uh, while discussing the pro growing importance of cities and growing importance of the cities around the world, and the real question, what is the European model of the city? What is the European model of the city, which is absolutely crucial so we should concentrate on this. How can we create the networks in the city? How can we create the relations between different actors? And next, how can we use European money and the other sources to support it? But not to start with European money, because the, it's too late. It's too late, because we will start officially at 14, there will be operation programs, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll start in 2015. So now we are 12, 15, three years. Three, three years for innovation? After three years, it will be different elements which would be necessary than today. So I think that being someone who is just very deep in the European funds, I just have the appeal, let's not concentrate on the European funds. Let's concentrate on the, on the goals, on the processes, networking, work, uh, working with the business, and next about European money. Because if we concentrate on money, money is just the instrument. Is just the instrument for the for the long term policy. We will change the instruments depending on the situation. We will see what what will happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Albrecht. <laughs> um, as I know, I have the information that uh, you have to leave in about uh, thirty minutes. I exceptionally invite the audience to to pose a couple of questions if if there are any anything in your mind. I think Mr. There on the left, please. Yeah. Manfred Horvath from Vienna University of Technology. I was in the past uh, for 15 years responsible for the implementation of the framework program in Austria. I have just a final question, a question on your last remark. Yeah, you said uh, uh, start not don't start from the European money. Well, this was your your general question yeah. from the funding, but start from your needs, from your from networking and so on and so on, and the instruments can be adapted later. 
But this is a bit surprising for me because you are deciding about framework program, about Horizon 2020 or the structural fund. Yeah, and well, changing Horizon 2020 later is probably rather difficult because of you would need another round of co-decision process. So could you elaborate on that? So I mean, th this cannot be independent from each other to develop the European instrument and on the other side to have the needs, let's say, the bottom-up ideas. I think that has to be an integrated process, or am I mistaken? No, you're absolutely right. I mean, it should be interdependent, but it can, cannot be just one way. It, it, it means that, uh, uh, of course, I, I, I simplified, but, uh, uh, but the, the question is, uh, if we have the, uh, uh, the thinking about European different structures, frameworks, which are connected to money, is, is to be connected to the concrete period. But of course, the European money can be used if there is innovation strategy of the region. If it exists, if there is agreement between the people of RDA and, the, and, the, and of course the people from the universities and the business, if it exists. So next, if, if, they, if they already created the idea and they have the uh, agreement about the innovation, next, there is a proposal to, to have the support from the, uh, from the uh, European money. This is what I want to say. I mean, this is about the, you know, uh, initiative, concept, working, which is parallel, which is parallel to the money, but not waiting that the, that the money will create the innovation. Because uh, you, you know the examples much better than me. We have some places in Europe when the local ambitions were to create the centers of technology, but there are no scientists but the just centers. So the, this is the problem, that there is the money for the, for the technology park. It's something, nobody to work this. And so this is the, this is the trap. And so th that, that's why we should be rational. And, the, and the innovation uh, is a process which is ongoing. It's not a process which is connected to European money. This is what I wanted to say. I absolutely agree with everything that was said, and I think this was one of the main failures of the of the current programming period, where the uh, instruments were used as a way to get money and not to for some uh, long-term goal, uh, and they were created uh, in in a completely uh, detached from reality way in, in most places in the area of innovation. But my question is. How do you convince um, the leaders of the cities or the administration to be more involved? Because in some cities, they're very involved, like Wrocław. In Warsaw, the, the, the policy is to create um, an, op an innovation space, which means do nothing and, and wait for somebody to do something. And, uh, and this is a, a, a big problem. I mean, Warsaw is completely... Um, unorganized in this area, and, and despite having uh, most of the science and most of the research, there's no instruments to connect the two. I think that Paul will give the answer because he's working with Euro cities and the, the, the mayors of big cities in Europe. You know, just to, to, to answer very, very quick, I mean, they know what they are doing because they, they, they are just uh, uh, managing their cities, and they are managing their cities all, all the time. So they. Uh, many of the cities, big cities in Europe, now they, they, have, they, have, they, they are playing different games uh, with different financial resources. So they have their long, if they are clever, if they are smart, uh, it, it means that they will have the long-term policy. And uh, this is just the difference between the better managed city and the worst managed city. That one of them is developing the, uh, and facing new challenges, uh, very difficult challenges, and, and the other. So I don't... I don't th think that this is the, uh, uh, the, the problem to, I mean, is a challenge to persuade the, the, the local authorities. Some of them just, uh, nobody is obliged to, uh, to, to do this or that policy. I mean, they, they are doing their own policy. So I, 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 I do trust the, uh, in general, in general, uh, uh, local authorities. I think that in the long term, they have their perspective. Or they are weak. Over there, week they lose the elections. And can I just have one remark more? But maybe later it will be developed. Uh, uh, it's about the stirs of excellence. I mean, this is one of the biggest mistakes. And, uh, and I think that uh, uh, the panelists from Poland say that, for example, in Poland, 
we have, we have doubts concerning excellence. N no way. Excellence is the criteria for, for the innovation. I mean, no, for the research. No other way. The problem is not to neglect uh, uh, and to pre-place excellence by territory, territorial approach. The question is how to put it together and how to use the, 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 uh, the, the, the elements uh, 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 and to put it with the excellence. One of the most challenging elements, and we are now working on this, uh, how to put it into regulation. But uh, as I said, for a while, nobody knows uh, uh, how to do it. But this is a real challenge for, uh, uh, to have the result, territorial result. So um, uh, I, I just, uh, I hope that I answer your questions. I didn't comment also, because I don't know the details. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Orff, for this stimulating uh, thinking. I'm afraid that I have to go forward with the program to be a bit strict. I invite next uh, Christian Swanfeld to give a view of uh, DG regional policies on the various issues already raised. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm Christian Svanfeldt. I'm very happy to be here in Krakow. It's not only a night nice city, but I know also that the university here is working very closely with the local economy, which is quite interesting. Because th that's one of the issues I'd like to raise. And I'm, I'm, I don't think I will be able to answer all of the maybe questions and issues raised by Mr. Albrecht, but uh, I think they are very valid. I'm going to speak about two things. One is the cities of tomorrow, and then the second issue is how to align this to the smart specialization. So that's why I call this uh, the smart cities of tomorrow. Uh, cities of tomorrow is a reflection process that we carried out um, during the past two years, and, and we presented this in a report. And the main messages out of that, it was a very quite... Um, quite an exhaustive reflection process with many stakeholders involved. We had Eurocities, we had Ivan Tosic here and many others. Uh, some of the key messages is that, yes, we have a European shared uh, vision of how we want our cities to be, how they should be. We have the Leipzig Charter, we have the Toledo Declaration, we have the Territorial Agenda. We have a series of documents that has been agreed either at EU level or at intergovernmental meetings and so on. Second is that this model is under threat. Uh, we have a lot of, of threats and weaknesses in our cities. Uh, third is that we have some challenges and real challenges to turn these into opportunities, really, and that we, are, uh, we think we are able to do that. But to do that, we, we need to rethink uh, governance. Uh, we need a holistic, integrated territorial approach. And I won't go into the importance of cities here, and <laughs> uh, but just the cities are, I mean, they spread all over the continent. We can't ignore them. Uh, but there are a series, of course, challenges to our, our, our city models. And I won't go into them really in detail, everyone, but I mean, they're social, economic, environmental, and so on. They're also territorial, and you know most of them. But... The interesting aspect is, of course, that you can't deal with them separately and individually, each one. If you deal with environmental issues, you can't neglect the social issues and so on. And you can't neglect the territorial issues. Uh, then the third thing is, is, you know, are the threats or opportunities? And I think uh, we need to rethink a little bit what we consider as problems, what we consider as, as, as threats, and what are really opportunities and what are challenges. Uh, because we're quite mainstream in Europe about our thinking sometimes about where to go. And um, I thought in this conference I'd like to raise some issues maybe closer to Ivan's compared to the more research and excellence perspective that, that we tend to hear. So th the thing is... I mean, we should try to look at things not as threats, but as opportunities, uh, although they might look threatening. Um, these are my kids, and they are threatening sometimes. It's also about identifying the right challenges. Um, cities are extremely important actors when it comes to climate change, to actually fight... Uh, to, to, to be forerunners in CO2 um, emission reductions. 
they are the places where we can really change, that, that, that where lifestyles can change, where we can make the big improvements and big changes in how we use our resources. But cities must look at this also from the perspective actually of, of, of other uh, dimensions and, and especially health, that, that for cities, m we heard I think in the plenary about, um, uh, was it Ostrava, where, where they have such a dirty air. I mean, that's a real problem. People die much early because of that. It's extremely high cost uh, to, to, to uh, deal with, with sicknesses and other things. You, uh, so my point is that whilst we tend to think about mobility, we say, okay, we have too much CO2 emissions, we must invest in electric vehicles. No, that doesn't solve a problem at all because we still have congestion. We still have big motorways or big roads segregating our cities. We still have inequalities in access to services. So we should think about other issues related to climate change as clean air, the fact to get our citizens moving and fight obesity, which is the main, uh, I think one of the main um, health problems in Europe. Uh, and finally, the conclusion is that if we want to deal with, with the different challenges, turn them into opportunities and so on, we need to think a little bit differently. Uh, we need to move into from our fixed space, and this is something that, that Mr. Albrecht mentioned, I mean, what are, we, what are the units we, we deal with there? Are there administrative units or are there the actors? And of course, they are both. We need to combine them. We, need, we have our, our fixed administrative sort of action spaces, which are, are legitimate. That's where we elect people, the people that work for us. But they need to interact at different functional levels. And it's not all, actually. It's not just about levels of, of, uh, of governance. It's also about getting the actors together and go beyond the normal suspects, also cross the, the territory. So it's both horizontal and vertical and, well, it's a third dimension there in terms of, of, of actors. And to do this, we must learn to think a little bit differently uh, in terms of, of how we measure things, how we set our objectives, who we involve, and so on. So to move from the maybe codified to the more tacit, from the uh, tangible to the intangible, and so on, from the elites to be more inclusive when we think about stakeholders. Uh, so. The conclusion of, of all this work is really that we need to invest in our cities, but we need to do it differently. It's about integrated territorial approach, new government frameworks, to work across sectoral boundaries, to work with a wider set of partners, also including citizens, and to focus on long-term shared objectives. And I think this last point is very much, uh, it's, it's maybe the key point. Uh, so it's, it's, it's about a qualitative shift, really, um, that, that we need. And now I come to, to smart specialization. That's really essentially focused on innovation systems at regional or national level. And of course, innovation systems goes also beyond the national level. Uh, and they focus on excellence. They, they very much focused on, on the the actors involved in, in research, in development, in business, and so on. Um, and I think that the, the, the problem we face now when we speak about smart cities, if we want to leave that s smart cities that we heard about today, which was earlier uh, the, the, the energy, smart cities focus on energy, and we think about smart cities more in general, we need to maybe understand the differences when, when we look at innovation systems and, and, and cities because we have different types of focus. We have different types of relations and interactions. We have different spatial dimensions. So you have more a uh, sort of econocentric model in the innovation systems while the uh, city model is more sociocultural 
uh, you have other types of relations, functional, by a supplier rather than the physical and the social in the city. And you also have a different spatial dimension because innovation system has almost no real boundaries, uh, depends on how they're geared. I mean, they can be global. Uh, mm -hmm. While cities, it's th th the point about cities really, the, the whole thing is that they are concentration they are concentrations of people. Uh, so I think we, the, the thing is, how do we gear and how do we, do we mix these two things? I mean, you could see maybe, this is more of a, a question maybe than an affirmation, that cities are sources of soft and inclusive innovation. Uh, I want to just illustrate these in, 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 in a, a couple of slides about non-viable cities uh, where we have uh, maybe decreasing population, uh, we have a huge uh, income distribution <coughs> and, and uh, we have an insufficient economic base, we have high environmental pressure. This is the case of many cities in especially the eastern part of Europe, the smaller cities. And then we have increasing poverty and, and segregation and so on as, as, a, uh, as a result. And, and the question is, can we turn this into viable cities with more future orientation, resilience, etc.? Uh, look at what, what does excellent mean in this context. It's about the, the local excellence, um, which is sort of global instead, about being excellence in a relevant way in, for these places. And there are, of course, strategies for this. It's about long-term strategies, cooperation, etc. Trying to invest in the future, even if it's difficult. Uh, I just give a few examples of the diverse and innovative city. This is also about innovation, but innovation geared to, to the, the socio-culture dimension. And that means we need cities that are adaptive to change, that have the capacity to have sort of a, a certain dynamism in the, the culture, in the social relations. And that, uh, that's a different kind of innovation. Creative future, also city built on the future, etc. Uh, the, the future built on the cultural heritage, that's one way of being innovative. So, so I'd, I'd just give this, f end up with these three examples of smart city specialization. Bremerhaven, had a declining fishing and shipbuilding industry, and what happened, they specialized into to offshore wind farming. Here you have a technology-based specialization, which is quite smart. Another city focused on service innovation instead. Gijon has a very old population. They focused on a high quality of life service innovation strategy, which goes beyond sort of just the medical care for the old, but really it's about quality of life. And finally, in Nantes, they also faced the same problem at Bremerhaven, uh, an industry that evaporated, uh, and they invested in culture, but they've done that for, for 20 years. So it's, it's something very long-term, and finally, culture is the vehicle for innovation and pride, etc. So the conclusion is that cities have the potential to link innovation system to social system, or at least I like to think that that's the case. And they have the potential to, to move beyond just thinking about the creative classes to actually make all classes creative. And also, they have the capacity to speed up the implementation of Europe 2020 because they have the capacity to, or there are the places where the transformation can take place. And they can do it in an inclusive way. And again, the same, um, but the, the same conclusion as from the cities of tomorrow is that, well, we need a qualitative shift maybe to exploit the full potential of our cities. And I'll end with that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Christian, for, for, uh, for this uh, building a bridge between smart specialization and cities and, and pointing of the different focus areas. That was really interesting because we, we, we really think about that. How is it different for cities than regions? And um, also this, that smart specialization can be something more soft, like service uh, or culture. From uh, uh, the intervention of Christian, I would like to move to Paul Bevan. Your cities, and you have 10 minutes. 
<laughs> I feel like um, if I'm not repeating what Christian has said in just in a different way, at least I'm perhaps complementing it. Um, because it feels to me like we're piecing together bit by bit we're building this picture I'm not sure at the end we'll answer Ivan's big picture questions but um, uh, it strikes me that we are making quite a lot of progress as we contribute to the um, the discussion this afternoon Eurocities is the uh, political platform for the mayors of Europe's biggest cities we've 140 uh, big cities in Europe uh, who are members of Euro cities and together they represent about 25% of the European Union's population. So it's quite a big constituency of interest. And um, we've been going since 1986, so 25 years, over 25 years. Let's help see how this works. Right. My, I'm starting with this uh, strong statement. The, the recovery. Europe's recovery, we, to get out of this mess, uh, recovery can only be led by metropolitan Europe. Uh, we face global competition from emerging mega cities in China, in Asia, in Latin America, these developing economies. And uh, for them, uh, cities are part of their solution. And for us, increasingly, cities are part of the solution. When Eurocities was founded in 86, cities were part of the problem. That's why uh, uh, the mayors of those cities wanted that strong voice. But now, um, Europe's urban model is a competitive advantage. This is what uh, we've already, we've heard something of. And this is a picture of Stockholm and the new uh, Hammerby uh, quarter there, rebuilt around their old um, uh, shipyards. So my, uh, my message is that Europe 2020's goals will not be achieved um, without our cities being successful. We can't hope as Europe to achieve those goals without cities that are livable, functional and prosperous. Why? Well, I won't repeat the mantra that uh, Jan Albrecht was so uh, critical of, but we do know that cities produce 85% of our GDP, so we can't be smart without them. 80% uh, of our greenhouse gas emissions. We can't be green without dealing with uh, the emissions from cities and increasingly more of our people are living in cities and the cohesion of and, and social mobility of people within cities is critical to the success of Europe and the European project. So my argument is we have to focus our investment and our resources where it makes the greatest, most productive impact. Cities are our innovation hubs. This is where the action is. That light you can see is energy. It's not just the energy of uh, uh, street lights burning. It's the people, the business, the trade, the opportunities. These, these are Europe's key brands. You back your key brands if you want a strategy for a successful business. They attract trade. They attract talent, they attract tourism, uh, they attract investment, and they should be central to Europe's innovation policy. They should be. I don't think they are sufficiently central to EU's innovation policy. It will be more effective if it has a territorial urban dimension. Cities offer critical mass. Ed Glazer, the American economist, has written a wonderful book called uh, um, The Triumph of the City. The city is man's greatest invention, he says. And it's an in innovation in itself that the whole world is now following. Urbanization has not just accompanied economic growth throughout history, it's a prerequisite of economic growth. Bring people together in close proximity and the sparks fly, things happen. There are exchanges, there's trade, there's ideas, and it's all about density. It's all about urban concentration, critical mass. Enough concentrated population to create a market, demand, consumption, production. Enough uh, for public goods and services in particular. 
health, education, public transport, cultural infrastructure, and knowledge, research and knowledge. These are the ingredients for innovation, and cities have always been the cradles of that innovation. So urban concentration is also the best way to, uh, to, to sustainability. Urban concentration offers a really efficient, effective use of land, of resources, of shared infrastructure and services. Cities are a green solution. Cities also attract talent and investment. See, I've got very few words here, but lots of pictures just to brighten up the death by PowerPoint that uh, you're getting this afternoon. It's people that make cities. It's the density, the concentration of people. It's not the buildings that make the sparks fly, it's the people. And as we know, city governments, let's move now to the local authorities, compete to attract and retain people, talented people, by offering stimulating and attractive living and working environments, by building and building again that sense of place that attracts talent to the city, but also by developing that indigenous talent. This is what, of course, Richard Florida called the creative class, but I very much agree with Christian when he says our ambition should make all of the people in the city creative. He, uh, Richard Florida saw this class as drivers of metropolitan growth, so if we can make everyone creative, wouldn't that make a difference? Of course, more than anything, successful cities attract poor people. You have to remind yourself of this. They attract talented people, but uh, no the more successful your city, the more poor people are attracted to it because they want a better life. But all the evidence shows, too, that cities have the greatest share of highly qualified and talented people. Cities are the centres of the knowledge society and the knowledge economy. City authorities are also the ringmasters of their metropolitan economies. They build this triple helix partnership for economic development in their locality. They're best placed to understand their territory's capacity for smart specialization, its strengths, its opportunities, the DNA of the city, of the metropolitan area, the potential of the city. As Jan Albrecht was saying, you know, a decent, accountable mayor can do this. They animate and marshal the key stakeholders, the universities, the businesses, the NGOs. And they use the levers they have, land use planning, land ownership, education, finance, in an integrated way, in a joined up way, to build and support the innovation capacity of their territories. Innovations or technopoles like this one in Brittany are pretty commonplace now, designed to capture and commercialize spin outs from universities and even from the private sector offering technical advice, business support, networking and cluster development, seed capital, equity investment, mentoring, business angels. And importantly, cities have this massive, as we heard this morning, and probably unexploited or insufficiently exploited capacity to foster innovation through procurement. Innovation isn't, though, just about high-tech industries. It's also about introducing new processes in products and established sectors, helping those sectors to grow and develop. And city authorities are also very active in fostering this indigenous growth. It's not just about foreign direct investment. This is Barcelona Activa, which deals with more than 100,000 people annually on its premises. Social innovation, this is what Christian was touching on, I think, not just illustrated through um, collective uh, public services like transport innovation. Um, but they're huge, this, this public and social innovation dimension is hugely important. Uh, city governments are faced with many challenges, environmental, social demographic, financial. They're meeting these by innovating, changing mobility behavior, commissioning new forms of urban transport and, and, and intelligent transport systems, new ticketing, environmental programs could be waste to energy, district heating and cooling, waste reduction and recycling. This is all innovation for the public good. We're not just talking about technology, we're also talking about the softer changes of behaviour that make our cities better to live in and more um, prosperous and successful. And there's another side to this, of course, which is e-government. Smarter Europe needs smarter government, and city governments are a good place to start. And finally, Cities offer the perfect testing ground for innovation.
they are living labs. We heard this morning about this sort of quadruple helix. I think triple helix as an expression is bad enough, but uh, include the users, uh, the end users. And this is what um, uh, many of our member cities through their living labs have been doing. City governments like Amsterdam and Helsinki and others actively facilitating these pilots. As procurers of products and services, city governments can play a central role in replicating and rolling out to their whole territory solutions that are developed and piloted locally in this way. So finally, my message, cities should be key players in EU innovation policy. This is a great message to give and have the opportunity to give at a conference that's focused once again on regions, uh, because I don't think uh, Despite the new initiative of smart cities, as Jan was saying, that's just energy, really. And there's a whole range of development about joining up uh, innovation across these different aspects of city life. Uh, it's all about interconnectedness and integration. And city governments, city mayors, are really well placed to be able to be the ringmasters uh, of that effort. Uh, we have a new objective in Europe territorial cohesion and uh, innovation policy needs to be pushing that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for this very interesting speech and bringing explicitly the focus on social innovation where uh, European Commission is doing quite a lot at the moment. But uh, <laughs> at the time, I, I, I just want to draw your attention that there's a quite a movement um, in the Commission services for promoting social innovations. But we have to hurry up, and I invite uh, Wim Hafkamp uh, to present the joint programming initiative Urban Europe. Thank you, Pia. Uh, yes, we have to hurry up, uh, but I would want to take the opportunity to thank our hosts, to thank the organizers of this uh, wonderful conference in this uh, great uh, city of Krakow. That's the one thing. Uh, we're helped a little bit in uh, speeding up because I'm very happy with what speakers have said so far, especially with Paul Bevins and uh, Christian Sandfeld's uh, talks just now, uh, because that is the very uh, background, that's the very notion uh, in which the, uh, the governments of 16 countries uh, came together and uh, decided to start a joint program initiative that they called Urban Europe. Uh, and again, we see a sort of a, a three-tier, multi-layer sort of governmental approach uh, forming. Uh, Sixteen countries, not uh, all countries, not all member states of, uh, of the European Union. Uh, they include uh, Norway and Turkey on the extreme. And uh, without going into the detail of what joint programming initiatives actually are, uh, in this initiative they are represented by their national governments. Uh, they agreed to join efforts in uh, starting a, uh, a long-term uh, research program on urban problematics, on urban challenges, European solutions for European cities. Uh, we are in our pilot phase now, uh, that is 2012 through 2014, and we foresee an implementation phase of such a program between 2014 and 2020. It may not answer uh, all the questions Jan Ulbricht put on the table uh, when he was here in his presentation. He said, we need them now, but I'm sure this program will give us lots of uh, insights that we will uh, find we are needing uh, then. Uh, I'll spare you the, uh, the discussion that I could give on, uh, on the themes and the thematic approach that we're uh, choosing. Not all these themes will, of course, be uh, uh, embarked on at once. Uh, but you see the city as an innovation hub is uh, in the midst of them uh, as a key to economic vitality of cities. Uh, but in fact, in innovation is required for each of these themes, and there's new economy in each of them. Uh, the thematic uh, focus uh, of the JPI is um, maybe best described as an attempt to manage complexity. And of course, complexity cannot be managed. Uh, that's the very essence of it. Uh, it isn't subject to, uh, to control, uh, but asks for more uh, adaptively uh, learning, learning by doing. And you see here on the left side the, the vignette of Urban Europe's uh, strategic research framework. Uh, and I think one of the key things in there is uh, how uh, we want to uh, 
contribute to, to innovation, to radical innovation, that's the term we dare to use. Uh, we want to, uh, to do this with a, a long-term perspective, and uh, that will really take us beyond 2050 in our uh, thinking. Um, among the objectives, there is, of course, the world-class research environment, uh, because uh, we are aiming for a long-term uh, research program. Um, contributing to innovation is uh, central. Uh, developing tools, models, concepts, and more importantly, maybe uh, developing a lasting relationships between uh, research and practice. The, uh, the strategic research framework uh, that uh, was adopted in uh, the setup phase, that's a, a one and a half year uh, of work that went uh, on before the implementation phase, uh, was really to look at the, the four pillars that I think you will recognize very well. Out of that was developed uh, the four images of cities in which we want to do the longer term uh, uh, work. Uh, four archetypes uh, that allow for uh, long-term foresight for, uh, for visioning, for identifying the research demands around uh, a notion of capital that maybe you remember from the discussion on sustainable development. Uh, our process is that uh, from these uh, four uh, images, uh, we look at three uh, central issues and out of that develop research themes that will then be taken uh, into, the, uh, into the pilot phase, currently going with a little bit of delay. Uh, central elements are a longer term foresight activity that's about to start uh, before the summer and uh, research and development uh, projects, research development and innovation projects that we hope to start in pilot calls that will be opened uh, this year and early next year. Uh, at this point, I could dwell on this for about another half hour uh, but this is the 10-second version. I see you drastically shaking no here. Um, just to give you an idea of how we intend to work in this, uh, in this pilot phase that we are in now, uh, foresight is going to be a central activity, uh, the joint call is going to be a central activity, uh, and what's going to be very important is that we find a way to benefit across the borders between countries, that we benefit uh, for the cities uh, everywhere in Europe from programs that are going on currently on a national scale. Uh, in the, uh, the previous work within this initiative, we've uh, mapped out some, fir some 40 programs that are run by our national, mostly science uh, and technology funding agencies. And uh, it seems to me that uh, across the borders of our country, we don't even know that they are there. There are a couple of very, very interesting uh, projects going on in France. One that I came across only because I got involved in this very recently. Uh, it's a, a, a program on uh, modeling uh, urban flows, irregardless of whether that is energy, people, information. Uh, so to model the urban uh, metabolism. Uh, and we don't simply have something like that in, uh, in Germany or in Sweden uh, or in Turkey. So these are a couple of uh, vital activities there. The, uh, uh, the foresight theme, uh, as I said, uh, the project is about to start now. It takes a very long-term uh, uh, timeline uh, beyond 2050. Uh, of course, it will start by uh, really working well with all the efforts, with all the endeavors that we've already seen, and uh, Christian mentioned a couple of very interesting uh, and, and worthwhile uh, activities at the European level. Uh, there's a lot more going on uh, in the, diff the different European countries, and there's a lot more going on um, elsewhere in the world. That's why I like to draw your attention to the fact that at the open days in Brussels on the 9th of October, we'll have a special session devoted to this and uh, one of our key speakers will be the director of uh, the Shanghai uh, Department of Long-Term Planning and Forecasting. Very, very interesting to get that different perspective. We will have also Philippe de Stad, whom I believe was involved in the, uh, city, uh, in, the, in the study, the City of Tomorrow study that Christian talks about, and uh, Philip McCann, who is an advisor to Barroso and also to the OECD. Um, then we'll have uh, joint calls for proposals, joint calls for research proposals between the uh, funding agencies of um, six countries and eight funding agencies this year. And next year we'll have uh, some 15 countries participating in the pilot call. 
this year it'll be uh, a meager 8 million, next year maybe a little bit more, 12 to 16 million. It pales in comparison to the big numbers that go across the, uh, the stage uh, here today. Uh, but between the participating funding agencies from the different countries, this is considered to be uh, the start of something that will turn out to be much more meaningful in the long term. Uh, some of the key characteristics of the uh, research, development and innovation projects that we uh, aim for, again, without going into any of these uh, bullets in particular, uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, to put it to you that uh, working with living labs, living lab methods, as you heard Paul Bevan talked about uh, just now, that that's an aspect of practice. We want to make that an aspect of, uh, of research as well, and again, international collaborative uh, research. Uh, the expected outcomes of the pilot phase, of course, they are many. Um, and uh, I'd say with a nervous look at, uh, uh, well, I'm just being waved the two-minute sign here. You, you shouldn't have done that. You could have won two minutes <laughs> if you had not done that. Because I was about to say there's no way that I cover this in 30 seconds. Um, but I'll leave it on as I come to the conclusion of my speech. And I'm saying on behalf of um, both the uh, management board of the Joint Programme Initiative Urban Europe and of our governing board that we really hope to work with you over the next years as our partners, whether you are from research, technology, technology development, uh, or especially if you are from cities and urban regions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Wim for telling us of this very significant uh, initiative which is led by the member states. This is something uh, very important to, to understand that the majority of the science funding is in member states and to tackle the fragmentation between the countries. But uh, without any delay, I invite Miroslav Miller to, to tell us uh, your message. Thank you very much. Uh, I will see my presentation, yeah, okay. Uh, I will show you today uh, the state of organization of Wrocław Research Center EIT+, Plus, which maybe uh, some of you know from, from my uh, past lectures, uh, which I uh, delivered in, in last two years. Maybe a few words about Wrocław. Wrocław is the capital of Lower Silesia. It is a region nearby to Saxony. Uh, Wrocław as a city is the fourth largest city in Poland, but the second, with second largest uh, budget. It is really booming city in last years, in spite of, of, of crisis uh, time. And for instance, uh, growth, economic growth in 2011 was 13%. Uh, we see very many uh, differences in our city and region in comparison to the rest of Poland. Uh, I will not explain uh, why it is so, but uh, one explanation is for sure uh, true. Uh, this region and this city uh, has a society which was created from scratch after the Second War. It means. It is a society created from Polish people from East, uh, part of Poland, from Germany, from re-immigration, and it was really some kind of United States of Lower Silesia, people who, who started from, from scratch. Um, we have uh, elaborated some years ago um, strategy which we called EIT Plus because we wanted to attract the uh, headquarter of EIT to Wrocław, and it was actually one of goals. But there were many more goals, and it was, as Mr. Olbracht said, we started without any uh, Europe money. We started from uh, simply ideas, program, and then with building of network in our city and region. This net network was created 2004-2008, created also without European uh, money, or very little only, uh, in terms of so-called Lower Silesian uh, Center of Advanced Technology, which was consortium of uh, universities and, and uh, in, uh, industry in our region. And based on these uh, experiences, we created 2008 only this company, because the Wrocław Research Center EIT Plus is a limited company created by far, far five universities by region of Lower Silesia, but the main shareholder is city of Wrocław, and it is actually spiritus movens of this initiative, with over 80% of shareholders today. The mission of this uh, company was effective knowledge uh, management by organizing um, uh, applicative uh, research project and also by knowledge transfer through dis dissemination and by commercialization. It may be 
uh, quite um, uh, quite easy to understand why we did it, but it is not actually so easy to understand four years ago in Poland. Poland is a very undeveloped uh, country in terms of innovation and collaboration between uh, main partners in, in this game. Uh, Wrocław Research Center is actually not only alone uh, responsible for, uh, for, uh, for this kind of, of, of building of, uh, of ecosystem, but it is part of larger uh, intelligent management model, where in addition to our company, we have Wrocław Academic Hub responsible for integration of universities, and we have Wrocław Agglomeration Development Agency, which is responsible for supporting uh, investment inv investors and business. So we collaborate together uh, by implementing EIT Plus program in Wrocław. First financing came in uh, 2012 from program, uh, operational program uh, Innovative Economy. We applied as company for whole uh, ecosystem for three projects. Two of them are research programs for all region, Biomed and Nanomat in material science and, and biomedicine, and also for one investment uh, called Prace Campus for 140 million euro. By concentration of European uh, mm, support in this one company wo working for whole um, community, we achieved the largest um, investment in Poland in research and development uh, area. From this time we applied for many other projects and nowadays we have again 10 million euro in different smaller um, projects. I would like to say one thing. Nanomat and Biomat uh, seems to be, uh, as usual, uh, fields in, 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 in many and other places, but actually we are looking for intersection, for some mixture between uh, different technologies and knowledge. And for instance, nowadays we know that our specialization, smart specialization, will be for sure recovering of uh, technology metal from wastes and minerals, uh, medical diagnostic or drug delivery systems. All of this specialization needs different knowledge and different expertises. Focal point of our program is new campus, which we are now building by reconstructing of three buildings in 27 hectare area, uh, which belong to city of Wrocław, and by building one new clean room uh, uh, um, um, ha, uh, building. In addition to this laboratory area, we are also we have opened already um, interactive education center for children for school um, uh, uh, children and also we are we have invited already some some private companies to create in this ra in this uh, um, 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 environment uh, private research centers and and uh, incubator and hotel so you can see some some pictures from construction work which will be finished 2013-2014 uh, by opening of over tw 20 uh, square meters of, um, of, of laboratories. But important is, again, concept. These laboratories will not be um, only for EIT+. Plus. It will be, uh, they will be open for projects between industry and university groups. It means, it means we will open this area for, for, for uh, good ideas for, for groups which will be built for two, three years uh, and we will, they will use this facility. What we will do, we will integrate people from different areas. At the moment already we do it in within programs Biomet and Nanomat, where over 700 people are already working with us in, in 60 uh, projects, and we integrate groups from 11 institutions, not only from Wrocław. It is actually our key uh, goal. What we are doing in, in these projects, our role is uh, actually we do everything what universities doesn't do in Poland, don't do in Poland. It means we sh look for good, good uh, ideas for market needs. We, we are doing um, patenting, commercialization work. Uh, we define a financial model. We apply for co-financing. We, we are doing IP management, project management, coordination, administration, financial issue. So the groups are only investigating and they sh it should be in such a way uh, uh, this, this all, all this program. After 2013, uh, we will also do our own research in, the, our, in our infrastructure on campus Prace. So one uh, information, we use research money as investment uh, uh, fund. We, we, are look, we are looking for very risky projects, where of, of course they are quasi, um, quasi basic um, uh, project, but we are looking immediately, even at, at this stage, for useful and uh, for, for applicative um, 
um, properties after project will be successful. Then we have the spatial mechanism where uh, entrepreneurs are uh, initiator of project and they pay 10, 10 to 20% of, of specific research. And the rest we are covering uh, by with, our, with our program. And we have also our fund, uh, spin-off accelerator, where we uh, invest our money in good patents. And the rest, uh, the, uh, for more advanced um, uh, patents uh, or, or spin-offs, we are looking already by for Vichy and, for instance, Giza Poland from Israel is uh, uh, one of our, of, our, of our partners. So we see here some numbers after really two years uh, after launching our program. We have already um, many patents. We have already 10 startups uh, established last year and two are in preparation. Key persons, yeah, two last slides. We, uh, we always say persons and human resources, human capital is the most important issue. Our uh, management staff are all people, Polish people who came back to Poland after many years abroad. They were looking for many years for place where they would like to come back to. And they found it on Campus Prace. So I am very proud to have such uh, really fantastic people open for for, for collaboration, knowing uh, many languages and collaborating between them. We also were successful in building worldwide network, also mainly composed on Polish professors or Polish successful people from America, Asia, uh, and Europe, who also were looking for some, some, uh, some um, uh, intersection with Polish groups, and it, was, it is not so easy for them in this really highly fragmented community in, in Poland. So to, to conclude my talk, I would say we, we should, in Europe, but mainly in new countries of Europe, uh, create new places which new quality of collaboration with, which will attract uh, people also from our countries, but not only, to this place and to start with, with high level and high quality collaboration, um, interactions and integration, uh, both uh, mm, industry and, and, and university world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Miller, presenting this very successful uh, uh, formation when we think about the people from, uh, if I'm correct, from 700 people working together from 11 different institutes. It's, it's quite an achievement and uh, innovative as such.